Not long after our show last week, we learned that the wife of former President Jimmy Carter passed away. Rosalind Carter served as First Lady from 1977 to 1981. She and her husband were married for 77 years. She's been hailed for her commitment to humanitarian causes and equal rights. She had been suffering from dementia. She was 96 years old. Three days later, Henry Kissinger died. He shaped the U.S. Cold War policy as National Security Advisor and then served as Secretary of State under Presidents Nixon and Ford. He was a polarizing figure involved in the secret bombing of Cambodia and White House wiretaps of staff and news reporters. He was 100 years old. And then on Friday, Sandra Day O'Connor, the first woman to serve in the United States Supreme Court, died at 93. She was nominated by President Reagan. And though a conservative justice, she cast deciding votes in the 80s and 90s, refusing to overturn Roe versus Wade when it came to abortion. She died from complications of dementia as well. For much of her term, she was the only woman on the high court. There are four women on the court now. Our quote of the week is from the current Chief Justice, John Roberts, who calls Justice O'Connor a daughter of the American Southwest who blazed a historic trail as the first female justice with undaunted determination, indisputable ability, and engaging candor. John and Michael, let's start with your thoughts about Justice O'Connor and then work our she, way back. She was a right of center justice appointed by Ronald Reagan, went to the court, wound up becoming really the moderate voice, bringing the perspective, not only being the first female, but bringing the perspective that women health care also included access to abortion rights. And she was one of the staunchest supporters of those as those were challenged uh, in, in her time on the court. She is of the three, to me, is the most significant of those figures. I think it gets lost in history when you think about that distinction of being the first woman. And for much of her term, she was the only one. Yeah, yeah, and she was the center of the court. Uh, often, Sandra Day O'Connor was the tie-breaking vote on important, consequential, landmark decisions of the court. She uh, will go down in history as significant, not just by the virtue of the fact that she's the first female. She was a darn good jurist and an important figure in the history of the Supreme Court. I wanted to ask you during the commercial break, I don't know if you met Rosalind Carter. No. Um, but to me, it, what, what sticks out is that she was only the first lady for one term. But it seems like much longer than that. You know what I mean? Right. She's been part of the, the American... Jimmy Carter, his post-presidency, is probably the, the most redeeming part of his entire biography. And she was a huge part of that, in particular what they did with Habitat for Humanity. And for nearly 40 years post-presidency, in the spotlight, pushing good causes. Yeah, in, in many ways, she was a, a, one of the most modern of first ladies, very influential in terms of the policy discussions that she had with her husband. Uh, she was engaged in that manner in the same way that Hillary Clinton would be later uh, for Bill Clinton. Uh, Rosalind Carter was, a, again, a very consequential historical figure. How do you look back at Henry Kissinger? How yeah. will history see him? Well, I mean, we're still living the results of a lot of Kissinger policies. What we're going through in China today, you go back 51 years and it was Henry Kissinger and Richard Nixon that opened up that relationship with China and look where we are today. It's a very much the, the centerpiece of American foreign policy. Uh, Kissinger was highly regarded by members of both parties, primarily Republicans. Uh, it had some controversial uh, activities. He was the author of Detente uh, that really was American foreign policy toward Russia until Ronald Reagan came in. Uh, so he, again, 100 years old and very active right up to the end. He was a celebrity in the 70s. I just saw him on the dais for an old Dean Martin roast. Do you yeah. remember those? Yeah, he became more of a pop culture thing. That's to surely my exposure to him. And he had that melodramatic, very boring very voice. And so he almost became a character of himself. Final thoughts are next. First, Bomberito.com drone fox over the Muni in Forest Park, still holding on to the fall colors in December. Although I guess you can tell that was not taken this morning. <laughs>